professionals here. Welcome to Absolutely Marvel in DC. My name is Benny, that is Sal, and we just watched the show Sweet Tooth. I've seen episodes one through four, Sal has seen episodes one and two, and we're going to talk about one and two. <laughs> yeah. I only have like so many hours in the day, everybody. Come on. Well, that's actually a problem I'm running into because I'm supposed to be on the CW show with Dan and Dylan for the Superman show. I yeah. can't find time to watch it, Sal. No. Netflix, and of course, I've been spoiled because everything we have been reviewing up until this point has been not on Netflix, so we've been able to keep up week to right. week. Yeah, every week. Like, we're going to watch Loki tomorrow. It'll be one day. <laughs> yeah, but then but then Netflix comes along and they're like, oh, we got some superhero slash comic book properties for you. Boom, whole season. Yeah, Jupiter's Legacy and Sweet Tooth. And I'll talk about Jupiter's Legacy in another episode. But so Sweet Tooth came out, and I'm trying to yes. play catch up on so many shows. And then there's other shows that I want to watch that aren't superhero related. Like I'm trying to actually catch up with the Castlevania anime. Ah, uh, yes. And I'm having such a hard time finding time to watch this. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh, but anyway, Sweet Tooth. Let's talk about that today. Yeah, Sweet so, Tooth. Uh, Caveat, I know nothing about Sweet Tooth. I know it existed, right. and I know it was written by Jeff Lemire. But when I started really getting deep diving into indie books, it was already kind of past its time, and it's just re regarded as a classic now as opposed to, like, ongoing, get into it kind of a situation. So I sure. never read the comic. And the mm. art kind of turned me off because it was very stylized. Yes, I was in the same boat. Uh, I remember when Sweet Tooth launched, and... Uh, that like initial cover, like the main cover of Gus that everybody sees, yeah, is and they so... reuse everywhere. Yeah, they see it, it's literally Jeff Lemire's Twitter icon because he's like, yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, ho oh, oh, uh, ho, I'm rolling in it, but <laughs> I'm rolling in it. <laughs> I got that sweet fat Netflix cash, and unlike Jupiter's Legacy, people like this one, and <laughs> I don't know, I find it really repellent. Like I don't find it in any way appealing. I don't. I don't like the art, and it's not like I. It's. It's one of those things where it's just. It's just a stylistic decision. It's just. A, it's just a feeling. It's not that it's bad. It's not that it's even amateurish. I think it's actually quite good. It's just. It's quite good for that style, and that style does not connect with me, and I'm not interested. I'm just like ugh. Like I don't. I, if the protagonist is unattractive to me, I'm like. And when I say unattractive, I don't mean it has to look like Clark Kent all the time. But if 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 I find the main character to look ugh. like i don't want to look at it too long yeah that's kind of how i am with it too but the the show i'm finding incredible first up having come out of watching jupiter's legacy and completing jupiter's legacy and then going yes. into sweet tooth i can right. see where the other half of jupiter's legacy's budget budget went oh, into yeah. sweet tooth <laughs> <laughs> yes although it still has those seams i mean here's the thing uh i think it's fair to say right away i loved the first two episodes. I love the first episode of Sweet Tooth, and I was like, well, we'll have to watch the rest of it. So this is my new show I'm watching. I'm watching yep. Sweet Tooth now. I love it, and I think it's doing an excellent job of whatever it is it's doing. I didn't even, here's how much, I, how little I did, I knew about Sweet Tooth. I didn't know it was in the post apocalypse. I thought it was just about hybrid people, and that he was like a hill person. I, yeah, it's kind of what I thought, too. I thought it was just about, like, because I remember asking one time, like, so what is Sweet Tooth about? Because he's got, right. like, these deer horns and things like that. And yeah. someone told me, they're like, oh, he's just unique and that has nothing to do with the rest of it. He just has deer horns. Right. And now yeah, watching I, I, the show, I'm like, no, it's like a core element of the plot. Yeah. Because if you tell me he just has deer horns, I'm assuming that's just an artistic choice. Like, right. It'd be like watching the show Doug, where like everyone is a different skin tone because they didn't want to have any racism at all. So orange, blue, purple, you know what I mean? Like that right. was the intention of that. Exactly. So when you yeah. tell me he just has deer horns, my assumption is Sweet Tooth just has deer horns. It's just an artistic choice. And when I was told that, I never had any interest in reading the comic because they're like, nope. That's just, he's just a story. It's a story. I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. Well, I, well, I'm not going to read a story about a guy who has deer horns. Right. And, uh, and I'm watching this show and it's a, core elements of the plot did not know it was about the apocalypse loving no. the way loving their portrayal of it too also feeling it's very fitting almost like this was maybe done last year and they didn't want to put it out on top of covid yeah it's oh, all no. about a virus and what happens if it doesn't go the right way yeah yeah <laughs> now this is this is one of those things that actually i think will be considered one of those like post covid projects where it's reflective of the post covid world 
but also still manages to be its own thing. It's funny because, of course, Sweet Tooth is has the comic predates the show by a long time. It's just that, yeah, you know, by and large, a TV show, a movie that will reach the culture faster and more impactfully than a comic book, unfortunately. So, like, most folk know Sweet Tooth from Netflix now, and so they're yeah. gonna go like, "Wow, this is like a post-COVID commentary show," and it's like, eh. I mean, it has become that, but I think that the way they're handling it is so expertly. It's like, oh, this is this is the future. It's like uh, yeah. the the in the comic books, like that nice house on the lake is a post COVID like comic, and it works. It works on that. I haven't level. actually and read it, that one yet, but I get what you're oh, saying. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but it's one of those things where it's like masks, temperature changes, all that stuff. Like it's you gotta. It's all that crap is in there, which I was really worried during COVID that we were going to get like a ton of that stuff. And I was going to be so sick of seeing masks in my media. Um, I am, but I think it's done well. So I have no complaints about it. For the most part, I think I've watched things that are done well. Um, I do play this, uh, this app game called Arc Knights, which is all about like anime characters and stuff like that. And I did notice a couple of the characters that came out over the course of last year all have masks that they were pulling down. And I'm like, Uh was that because in the universe we're in post-apocalyptic or is that because during COVID? Because no one else is wearing masks. Like you got a couple of characters who have masks on and they're very obviously medical grade masks. They're not. Sure. But, the yeah, grifter I, masks. Yeah, yeah. So I found that to be a yeah. little funny. And it's um, funny. So the show itself, talking about episodes one and two, we'll go, we're going to go a little bit deeper into spoilers yeah. here. Sure. Um, Natalie and I sat down, popped on episode one, no idea what we were getting into. Nope. And it opened up with the hybrids and discussing how the world came to be. And the whole first episode is just establishing who Gus is and his yes. papa is. Or pa- what, what do you call it? Papa? Oh, Papa? Yeah. Papa? I think it's P-O-P-P-A? Papa. It's it's like close to Papa, but he doesn't yeah. say Papa. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. And what I'm what I'm really enjoying about this, and I'm not going to spoil because I know I'm farther along than you are. Right. Every episode reveals something about this universe. I've noticed. Yes. It's paced out so that the mystery of the universe is constantly getting small reveals from how they're handling the disease to what the disease actually did to more information about the hybrids. But none of that information is being dumped on me. No. Like we're not having an exposition dump where someone shows up and goes, the hybrids are this and here's the plot. Like we yes. don't have that. Yeah. Despite having doctor characters in the show, no doctor in a lab coat shows up and says, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, what you're, what you're, all, all the questions that you have, I have answers to on this clipboard and I'm going to run down them for the next 40 minutes. No, yeah. it's just, <laughs> it, it's, it's structured like a story. Who'd have thought? Good yeah. stuff. And I'm really enjoying that because every episode has a, like, uh, it's, it's obviously a long form piece of content. It's intended yes. for I think it's eight episodes, maybe ten, but I think at least eight. I think it's I think it's eight to eight or nine. Yeah. Yeah, but it's intended to go for that length. It's intended to go for that whole thing, and you yeah. can tell the way they're structuring the story. But so coming straight out of Jupiter's Legacy, and I'll talk more about this when I tell you about Jupiter's Legacy. But they handled their world building very poorly. Mm-hmm. It was the way Jupiter's Legacy did it was constantly tease the reveal and then yeah. never give the reveal. Well, I feel right. like half the stuff that is in Sweet Tooth, a lot of the initial out-of-the-gate questions you have, those are answered in episodes one and two. Yes. You, you know generally what the virus is going to do or how mm-hmm. it's handled. You know generally how the world has been built after the virus. And you yep. know generally what the hybrids are on a general level and how yep. they're being accepted into the world. Right. By episode two, any question you might have for this show is answered. following that they begin to reveal more of the world building and they normally open up the episode and it almost feels like a solo episode. There's one in particular and I'm going to say this without spoiling, but they open the episode revealing a new group of characters. Okay. And then that episode reveals who those group of characters are. And then we get to the finale with the big reveal that that group of characters is now around. Oh, and I, okay. I know I'm being super vague and that's intentional because I know I'm ahead of Sal on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair. I appreciate it too because Tiffany and I are watching the show ourselves and uh, I, I'm, I'm, we're digging it. And it's funny because, like I said, I, I didn't know anything about this world and Tiffany had read some of it, but it didn't appeal to her. But this show appealed to both of us in a big, bad yeah. way. And I think it has to everything to do with the story and the exp- uh, the way it is presented. Because I know that uh, in the comic, apparently, the papa is a dick. Oh, he's is just, he? He's like irredeemable or at the very least unrelatable, which is just completely not true in this show. Unless there's reveals about him later, which reveal that like he was a dick and now he's okay. I don't know. But 
apparently that was a big shift. The other thing that I noticed was, of course, like, I think that Sweet Tooth has mostly to do with Gus when he's a teenager, which is kind of why he looks, like, awkward and uncomfortable on the cover of every image of Sweet Tooth you've ever seen pre-show. I think the idea of, of, of casting him as, like, a 8- to 10-year-old boy, he's adorable. Like, there's nothing that I don't like about him visually. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring that up next, actually, too. The actor for Gus. Yeah, that he's kid great. is probably one of my first, like, oh, a child actor that can act. Yeah, no, watch none out. Of his, none of his scenes feel awkward. He doesn't look awkward. It doesn't look weird with the ears and the horns. They nope. don't treat it weird. He's just a kid who has or, he, horns and ears, yep. and they comment on it and reference it and things like that. And his creepy he's, night vision. It's cre- I love his creepy <laughs> night vision. Yeah, uh, I think you're at the. I think the next episode they really go into the creepy night vision jokes. Okay, and it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's it's it's great. Watch out, this kid. You know the MC was gonna gobble him up as soon as, qua- as, as oh, possible. Oh yeah, he's gonna be some kid. And you're something. like you're you're Nova now. <laughs> well, I think I think it was from a logistic standpoint too, because if this because the Sweet Tooth went on for a while as a comic. Yeah, and if you're you can't have a teenage Sweet Tooth who then you can't have a Daniel Radcliffe. No, where he's already like fourteen. So by mm-hmm. the time he's supposedly finishing in his 18th year of Hogwarts, yeah, he's, he's like actually like 29. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can't have like the Tobey Maguire situation. Although I will say, apparently, uh, the age disparity between Peter Parker and the MCU and Tom Holland is similar, if not exact, to Tobey Maguire playing a 17-year-old boy in high school. So, like, you know, it is. It is a practice that Hollywood does where they're like, let's get someone who's in their 30s and have them go to high school. There was a whole show, kids, that was dedicated to that. It was called uh, 90210. It was just a bunch of 30-year-olds playing teenagers. It was terrible. Anyway. I just summoned in our comments, uh, because we're doing this one live on our Comic Story Podcast Network where we film things on Tuesdays. Uh, about the Sweet Tooth Compendium. I think I'm going to order that now before we run into an Invincible situation. (laughs) And you can't get any? Yes. (laughs) Um, yeah, but yeah, I love the child actor. I love every one of the actors and actresses they have. I am enjoying. Agreed. When they introduce a new character, I don't feel like, oh my god, they're being shoehorned in because of insert reasoning. Every yeah. character, big man, I feel is great. He's amazing. Oh, he's he's great at his role. Yeah. Uh, he uh, Gus himself is great. The dad yep. was great. Although the I family. do find it funny. Who's who's the guy that plays the dad? He's in a lot of stuff. He's a I don't know. I've seen him before in like a million things, and I was like, I know that guy. I feel like he, someone's in a chat's going to tell us in a minute. I feel yeah. like recently that guy's been on all apocalypse world ending shows. Will Forte, <laughs> because he was also the star of like four seasons of Last Man on Earth. Mm-hmm. And he yes. was on something else that was like end of the world stuff. And I'm just like, yes, Will Forte really wants the world to end. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the, he's one of the uh, uh, harbingers of the apocalypse. He's MacGruber. <laughs> yeah, he is MacGruber. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, overall, without going into crazy, crazy spoiler territory, I'm yeah. really enjoying the show. Um, it's a very, very few shows that Natalie and I nightly are like, all right, we're going to watch another episode of Sweet Tooth. Because yeah. we've been just, every night we do one episode of Sweet Tooth. It's a lot of fun. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't want to spoil so many things. And maybe when we, we get, we're going to have to do a show roundup when we get to the end, both of us. Totally, totally. Yeah. And but, then we can uh, just do a full spoiler cast on it. Yeah. Too. I will say it's funny because there was a moment when, uh, I think it's in episode one. Where a a doe uh, enters the frame, and I went, "Wow, like they got a real deer! How <laughs> weird!" And then they go to wide, and it is clearly a CG deer. Like they use the the real deer for close ups, and then they were like CG deer. And I'm yeah. like, "All right, well, you know, I mean, what they, are tried. Gonna, they tried. What are you gonna do?" <laughs> and it, and it made me think about like where we are because there were moments like uh, in episode two. Uh, Gus and his and and the family in the lodge are uh, having dinner, and I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm watching too much corridor digital, but like, it looked like they weren't even in the lodge. Like they're sitting at the table, and like it looked like they CG'd the whole room they were in. I and feel like, like they CG through the window because I got that weird vibe oh, too. Definitely. I feel like the room was real. Yeah, but and they just green screened all the backgrounds, and then through the window they were CGing things, which made the whole room feel off, mm-hmm. because you don't see log cabins normally. Yeah, which makes no. <laughs> it a weird thing to see. You know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. But I've been in many of them, so I know what it looks like. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I. But uh, my my point is not necessarily that the CG is bad, because that's the thing is that it's actually quite good, and when it's noticeable, 
it doesn't ruin the show because everything else is firing on all the cylinders, right? And it's like, the acting's great, the direction's great, the story's good. Like, we're all enjoying it. And so when those things invariably come up, as they are wont to do, especially in a TV show, it's really negligible because when the quality is good, it doesn't matter. You know, one thing I did, I don't... I don't yeah. know if the well, it's, it's, it's based on what you're saying. The mm-hmm. show is so good that I've noticed a lot of the actors and actresses they're ugly, and I say this for <laughs> a reason because <laughs> okay. the show tried to make everyone feel real, and I think yeah. that's what makes it feel so good. I don't know if they've introduced the character of the Doctor Adigia Singh yet. Mm-hmm. I think that was in two. I think he's like in the yeah. background. He's doing his own B plot thing. Right. I, I, I don't know what happens to that. But if you look at that Doctor, he is ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but he is an amazing actor and yeah. like i am so invested in his storyline by episode four that my only complaint it's not even a complaint it's like right. this show is so good they yeah. didn't care to go to like okay we got to get like the gorgeous doctor the right. gorgeous big man has to be a sexy guy you know right. what i mean like like no one looks like Oh God, we got the the pretty boy cast from LA. They look like real people doing yeah. real things. Yeah, this isn't Hunger think, Games. Yeah, and I think that's what I like about it though. Yeah. Because at no yeah. point does it feel like, wow, I'm an ugly son of a bitch because the rest <laughs> of the world is gorgeous, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that did not occur to me at all, I have to say. Like I didn't find anyone particularly unattractive. I think that's that was my complaint about the comic. I, I was like, sweet tooth looks like friggin' crap. What am I doing? <laughs> He looks like Pee Wee Herman. Like, forget it. Okay, um, I'm not gonna say ugly. That's an extreme way to say yeah, it. Yeah, because like, they're not. Like, I mean, no, like, no one's Adil ugly. Akhtar looks like a, he looks like a guy. But that's the thing is, he looks like a guy. He right, looks like a, a yeah. dude. I'm and, ugly because I look like a guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Just read I my comments. Somebody, I am an ugly person. But, yes. But if so. you wanted a regular guy, you know, then I can be cast <laughs> as that. According to that. And that's what I think I liked about that. It's yeah. Just, yeah, there you go. Wolf status, more properly worded. Yes. Just not good looking. Yeah. No, not, well, not classically not tr- good looking, I'll say. Not not Hollywood not Hollywood sexy. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, they got the best people, you know? Yeah, they did. They did. The show's great. Acting's great. The, I, yeah. Everyone's great on that show. I'm loving it. I mean, so. we're already like, we're, you're only almost 50, like you're 50% through the show. I'm only like a quarter of the way through the show. But I think it's safe to say we've seen everybody that like is going to be a major player in this show. And as such, we know that the main cast is good. Like they, yeah. it's not like there's going to be a main villain of sweet tooth and it's played by, I don't know, uh, Andy Dick. And it's just like, <laughs> why did you do this? <laughs> why did you ruin the show? No, they, the main villain, I think shows up in three, just a heads up. Oh, okay. Well, I, I haven't caught it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's three. also one more cast member that shows up at the end of three. All right. Cool. And I, cool, I think cool. that's it moving forward at that point. Great. But, Works for but me. Even those people are great. I don't want to go into that. Yeah, yeah. here you go. Henry Cavill is a gorgeous, perfect human being. Yes. If the whole cast looked like Henry Cavill, I'd be like, it wow, would be but- weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like he should be Superman, right? Because he looks that good. That yeah. works great. It's why it was weird when they cast Nicolas Cage as Superman because he doesn't look like Henry Cavill. He looks like sure Nicholas Nicolas friggin' I, Cage. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Superman shouldn't be balding. But anyway. <laughs> uh, he, he was he was the opposite of balding when he had uh, the Superman role. He had a mullet. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, he was like, look, I can do it. I can do it. Yo, come on, let's do it. All right. Anyway, All right, hey guys, I hope you guys show. enjoyed our, our mm-hmm. quick opinions on episodes one and two of Sweet Tooth. We enjoyed it. Definitely recommend it. We'll come back to this when we wrap up the episodes. It's the downside in Netflix. I feel like we can only do an, a, a, a first impressions and yeah, we're done. And a last. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you can maybe do like a postmortem on the show because people are just so, maybe some people were late to the party. Like you catch them, but that's kind of it. With Netflix, it's really, like the Netflix model, yeah, I don't want to get into it. I don't it, like it. I wish, it would, I wish this was a weekly release. Agreed. Agreed. I think it would be, I think it actually would hold up better. Yeah. But Netflix audience is not ready for that. Netflix nope. audiences are like, no, no. Binging and let me tell you is my life. I was like that. Like, I think when, when the Marvel shows were out, I was like, yeah, no. Why would you do episodic? And it's like, oh, because releasing the whole show destroys the show. <laughs> yeah, it does in a lot of them. It does. So, so. Yeah. Review Korean dramas. Maybe we will, Wolf Status. Me and Dan. Yeah, maybe. We'll review Korean dramas. Recommend right, Dan. Yeah, recommend a Korean drama. Me, Sal, and Dan will watch it for the ten thousand sub uh, celebration. Right. Does that work? <laughs> Dan? Does that work, Sal? Sure. 
Okay, one Korean drama, one, one episode. One Korean drama, yeah. One episode. I'm going to c- classify one episode. If this, if this episode gets over a thousand likes, we'll definitely do it. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed our videos of this. We'll catch you guys next time right here at Absolutely Marvel in DC. I'm Benny. That's Sal. Thank you so much.